Welcome to how today you need to change tires. So let's talk about how to choose the tires for your grand adventure by touring, by packing, whatever you want to call it. I got you covered. Tubeless, tubes, anything. If you're new here, my name is Davide Travelli. I've been cycling around the world since 2015. I pedal over 85,000 kilometers across 58 countries. And so I have a little bit of experience. In the Americas, I had a classic bike touring setup with a surly disc trackers, 26 inches wheels. And then from Africa, the last 50,000 kilometers, I have the Genesis longitude that you see here. It's a 27.5 plus type of bike. I use a tubular, I run a tubeless setup on this bike. So let's get into it. The first choice you have to do is tubeless or tubes and it's a very easy decision to make if your wheels your rims are tubeless ready go for tubeless it's a very simple technology it's uh, simple to use simple to manage and usually is set and forget you want know that you got a flat because the sealants repair it but we will talk about more about the tubeless system a little bit later if your rims are not tubeless ready i would suggest stick to tubes unless you do loads of dirt road stick to tubes and uh, and save the money because otherwise the conversion it's it becomes a little bit more expensive you have to change the rims so basically you have to replace the wheels and it's expensive so we are all familiar with tubes, even though now there are some new tubes on the market that are half of the size and half of the weight. What type of tire do you want to get if you use tubes? Most of the people that they do long distance traveling, they use uh, Schwalbe, is this brand here, and they use uh, basically two type of tires from the Schwalbe line either the Marathon Mondial or the Marathon Plus. A good amount of people think that the Schwalbe Marathon Mondial is a superior choice in the Schwalbe catalog. In my experience, it is not. The difference between the Schwalbe Marathon Mondial and the Schwalbe Marathon Plus MTB or Tour is that the Schwalbe Marathon Mondial is a foldable tire. What does it mean foldable? It's like this is a much bigger tire because I use plus tires. But as you can see, it's folded in uh, one, two, three, three pieces. Yeah, so it packs down quite small. The Schwalbe Marathon Plus Tour or MTB, they cannot be folded like the, the Schwalbe Marathon Mondial because they have a, basically a, a metal wire on the edge you can fold them in a basically eight like an eight number and then fold them so it's basically there will be around this size in my opinion the Schwalbe Marathon Plus Tour or MTB they are superior of the Marathon Mondial because they have an extra insert that if you go on the Schwalbe website it's uh, the blue insert and they are a little bit more uh, puncture resistant. All of th these three tires, they last more or less uh, uh, the same amount of mileage. You can get up to 14,000, 16, 17,000 kilometers if you are uh, mostly on paved roads. So they last a long time. They, the durability is very good. They are uh, puncture proof and uh, yeah they are very very tough so the, it's not the the most comfortable um, tire and you have to run them at a very very high psi so the pressure has to be at least over 50 psi better if you inflate them at 60 psi so it's a very it's very tough it's not gonna be the most gentle tire on your back but it's definitely the one that lasts the longest and is the most uh, puncture proof and you don't want to deal with uh, replacing the tires all the time when you're on the road because a is expensive b logistically wise it's difficult to arrange uh, deliveries or to source these type of tires 
especially if you are outside Europe or Northern America. If I was you, I would strongly consider either the Schwalbe Marathon Plus Tour or the Schwalbe Marathon Plus MTB. Both these tires have the same compound. The Schwalbe Marathon Plus MTB has a slightly different uh, threading and design, so it's a little bit more uh, uh, apt for off-roading, but it rolls very similar to the Schwalbe Marathon Plus Tour. So my suggestion, you will probably do some dirt on your journey, so go for the um, Schwalbe Marathon Plus MTB. And if you're stick only to pavement, maybe you could consider the Schwalbe Marathon Plus Tour. But the rolling resistance between the two is very, very similar, depending on the clearance of your bike frame fit the widest tire you can possibly uh, mount on that bike. I would strongly suggest do not travel long distance with a tire that is shorter, narrower than two inches. The narrower you go, it's less comfortable, but you also open up to have some problems on the road like breaking spokes on your wheels. But if the tire is wider, it's uh, very difficult, you're gonna break a spoke. If you use tubes, what kind of uh, spare parts do you need to take with you on a tour? I would strongly suggest to take with you at least two tubes. So when you get a flat, you find the hole, you patch it up and you let it rest. And meanwhile, you use one of the two spare tubes to mount on the on your wheel. Remember, if you get a flat, to try to find it on the tube where you have a hole and check the tire in the same spot because usually the problem is in the tire. So if you patch your tube after a flat and then you fit it on the tire and you didn't check it, you're gonna puncture it again. Which brand should you buy for uh, tubes? In my experience, the two brands that, you, that are reliable in terms of tubes are Michelin and Schwalbe. I always use Michelin and Schwalbe. Sometimes when I was in the Americas, I basically broke the, the Schwalbe and the Michelin I was carrying with me and I had to source something locally. And in Latin America, they sell Kenda and it was terrible. All the Kenda tubes that I used, eventually they break where there is the valve. They used to break, I hope they solve this problem, but I will never touch a Kenda tube ever again, if possible. So just buy Michelin or Schwalbe that are reliable. If they cost one euro more, it's not that much different. Now, this is a traditional uh, type of tube in rubber. If you want to save some weight and space, now there are these ones that are basically half of the size and half of the weight. I strongly suggest to bring these type of patches that require vulcanization, so you need this, this uh, special glue. And in my experience, they are, um, they are very strong and the one that doesn't require glue, they never adhere properly to the tube and you're gonna find yourself to have another flat because the patch did not patch properly the, um, the, the hole, the puncture in the tire. You need levers to remove the tires. Again, there are different type of levers, most of them are made of plastic. I would strongly suggest you to buy levers like these ones, that they are metallic. They, ha they have plastic on the outside, but they are a metal plate. These will not break, especially if it's cold, the tire is very hard, you might snap and break the plastic lever in two. With the metal ones, they are not gonna <coughs> fold and uh, people are afraid that they might scratch uh, the rim, who cares? 
we need to look at the practicality when we live on the road. If your rims are tubeless ready, go for tubeless. It's you set it up and you forget it. It's a very, very easy technology. It's your proof. If I can manage, you can manage as well. We'll talk about the tires that I'm using a little bit later. What do you need to do the conversion from tubes to tubeless if your rim is tubeless ready? First of all, you need tires that are also tubeless ready. So think about that. Then you need sealant. There are different brands, different type of um, pricing, but they're more or less, um, they're not the same, but there are uh, many that are quite reliable on the market. So that's not gonna be a huge problem. Then you need a valve because you will need to stick a valve. When you have tubes, they already come with a valve. So you need a, a tubeless valve. You need to patch the rim and seal it with a tape. There are rim tapes that you can buy in bike shops that are a little bit more expensive, but you can also do it, uh, do it yourself using either duct tape or some electrical tape. As long as you seal the holes in, um, in the rim, that's fine. So, sometimes the rims that are tubeless ready come already with a, um, with a, with a tubeless kind of setup. So the, um, the tape that there is inside is already tubeless, check. Some, some do, some don't. But you can also go around with, a, with some tape just to make sure. So yeah, very easy. You put the tape, then you pierce a little hole, you push through the valve, you fit it properly, you fit the tire, and then you put some sealant inside. That's it. And then you have to seal the tire so that the, the air and the sealant doesn't come out from the side of the rim. And for that, you basically need to pump up very quickly the tire and you will need a compressor or a special pump that uh, release loads of, uh, loads of air at the same time. They call it gong or something like that, but you will find hundreds of tutorials online about this thing. Now let's talk about the tire. There are like thousands of tires that you can choose, even on tubeless, which one to get, which brand to get. Again, we go back to the same consideration that we did for the tire that you choose for tubes. We want something that lasts a very long time, that is durable, that uh, is capable to cover different type of terrain and that it doesn't puncture and it doesn't fall apart very quickly. I try different ones. I am very happy with Schwalbe. I'm very happy with the compounds they use. I think they make uh, very um, reliable tires that I used in the Americas when I had tubes. And uh, I found myself in Africa going back to, to Schwalbe, even though for a tiny little part, I use a different kind of brand. But I think this is the, the solution for me. I use the Nobby Nick because my, my bike can fit a plus size tire. So they are 2.8. And the Nobby Nick is an all rounder tire. It's capable to cover different climates, different terrains. It lasts quite long. I start to notice a degradation on the performance of the tires after the 10,000 or 12,000 kilometers mark. But on my front tire, I got to over 14,500 kilometers with a knobby nick. So it's it's very very good very capable all rounder sometimes i feel i would like a little softer compound but all in all i always go back to this choice because it's the most reliable for me and uh, yeah it performs very well you really rarely have problems 
as I said, the only problems you start to have is uh, after the 10,000 or 12,000 mark in terms of mileage. And what are the problems? You start to notice a few more holes, a few more punctures, and sometimes the, the sealant is not able to to seal the, the puncture properly because it's a it's a wider cut so you need to stick some plugs into them even this is very easy you don't need to remove the wheel you with a screwdriver or a, a proper tool you stick into the the tar the the plug and that's it and then you pump up again uh, your tar and that's the end of it i would suggest uh, to take one or two tubes with you if you do a very long bike tour, I would suggest to take two uh, tubes just in case you cut, you make a big, huge cut in your tire for some reason. And the, the sealant obviously is not able to, to seal uh, a cut like, like that. And even the, the plugs are not able to seal a cut this big. If you get a cut like that, you basically just remove the tire, remove the, the valve, clean up the tire from the, from the sealant, and basically use a, use a patch like this, a rubber patch, that you put against the, the cut, and then you basically need to use the tube and pump it up. In over 50 km, 50,000 kilometers, crossing the whole of Africa and basically most of Europe, I never had uh, this kind of problems. I, it happened a few times that I had to use the, the, the plugs. Only one time last year in Morocco, I went to Morocco with uh, very old tires and uh, I thought to myself, I replaced them after Morocco because I, I thought I was going to stay only a few weeks but I ended up staying four months and I did uh, very extreme routes in the desert and my tires, they were very old. They were about uh, 12,000 kilometers. So yeah, um, I thought I could squeeze a little bit more life and be a bit more economical for me, but uh, I should have replaced the tire before going to Morocco if I knew I was gonna stay uh, so long. Also my mistake, on, I was running very low pressure because I was on a, on a dirt road that was, uh, was quite challenging. And then I just started to descend and uh, I forgot to pump up a little bit the tires. And uh, because when they are old, you can easily pinch them and cut them. And uh, yeah, I got a cut and I had to use a tube. And that was uh, my first time in 50,000 kilometers using the, the Nobinik. Another advantage of using the tubeless system is that you can run the tires at a much lower pressure. So it's more gentle, it's more fun, it's more easy to ride your bike. And especially on dirt road, you want to have soft tires because it's like having a suspension on your bike. If you go for tubeless, what should you bring with you? Well. It seems like you have to bring more than uh, with the tubes because you need to, in my opinion, in Europe I don't do it, but if I was to be in Latin America or in Africa, I would bring a small bottle with uh, some spare sealant. How much? Usually it depends, um, maybe at least 200, but it's better if you go for a, you, you fill up a, um, a plastic bottle of uh, like Coke or Sprite and or 500 or uh, 400 ml and uh, you're safe. You know that uh, anything happen, you can refill basically two tires. I will bring with you one spare valve or in reality, you don't really need the, the valve because it's r almost impossible it, it breaks, but you might want to bring with you a few cores because if something breaks, it's the core of the valve. And these, uh, you can go to the, your local bike shop, it probably has a drawer full of them. There might be second hand, but who cares? You just need to bring with you like three or four and um, that's it basically. 
bring with you some sort of tire boot so that if you get a cut you can uh, patch, it up, patch it up easily and I would also suggest to bring with you a few ones you probably never need it but bring a few thumbs up patches and vulcan vulcanizing glue and one or two spare tubes based on my experience in reality you will probably do not need anything except when the tire is very old you will probably have to use a few plugs here and there but the rest of the stuff even the tubes you will probably never use them if you go for a tubeless setup how much sealant do you put in a tire like this 2.8 or 3 inches well it depends who you believe if you believe your bike mechanic you won't put much but if you believe me you're gonna use a lot so when the tire is new and i have to seal it and set it in place in the in the rim i usually put at least 120 but for example now that i'm going back to africa and i'm going to algeria i'm gonna replace the tire and i will put at least 140 milliliters on uh, on each side. In my opinion, you, if you put uh, at least 120 milliliters, you have, a, you have some peace of mind. Of course, if your tires are 2.6, 2.4, 2.2, 2 inches, use a little bit uh, less. But a little bit of extra weight is not, gonna, is not gonna make a difference. Another thing you could consider on a tubeless setup is to use some inserts I do not use them because they are always a little bit messy to fit but uh, it's probably wise because if I had an insert I would have not been able to cut or probably the chances of cutting my tire as I did pinching it on a descent on a rock um, would have been very slim. But again, it's something more to buy, something more to fit, and uh, I never really try to be honest. But it might be wise to use an insert, especially if your bike mechanic uh, fit it for you. It's, uh, it's probably a no-brainer. That's it. I hope I covered all my knowledge about tires. If I miss something or you have a question, leave a comment down below and uh, I will just reply with my opinion or my experience. In short, if your uh, wheels are tubeless ready, go for tubeless. It's very easy. It's fit and forget kind of technology. If you have to use tubes, again, I don't think it's worth to, to buy two new wheels just to have tubeless, but it's a choice that uh, you have to make it for yourself if you do loads of off-road usually the rims the type of bike that you bought should be tubeless ready so i strongly suggest go for tubeless because it's easy to manage it's a uh, very comfortable riding because you can use much lower pressures so on the schwalbe marathon plus MTB I was using about 60 psi on this one I usually I'm on 15 psi 1.5 against 6.5 imagine how comfortable it is for my back all right it's dark I hope you found this video helpful if you did like subscribe all that crap and I'll see you the next time ciao